Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Mayflower is supposed to be preceded by April showers, not April snow. Yet here we are. We'll tell you what time to expect the flakes. But we're going to begin, Ben, with Governor Whitmer calling on the state to expand the use of therapeutics to help combat a COVID surge in Michigan hospitals, though once again stopping short of issuing any new restrictions. The numbers just aren't getting better. 7,955 new cases of COVID-19 in the past 24 hours, with 35 more Michiganders losing their lives to the virus in the last day. Today, Governor Whitmer continued her stance against the tough shutdown she imposed this time last year. And while still calling on Michiganders to mask up and socially distance, she added what she calls a new tool in the toolbox. Rod Maloney live with more here. Uh, Rod, the only thing here is that this tool really isn't that new, is it? No, it's something that we've known about for a long time. Devin Remdesivir being one of them. Governor steadfast in her decision not to have any more shutdowns and going to these kinds of uh, therapeutics that we have seen and have been available really since uh, last fall. We have a tough couple of weeks ahead of us as more infectious B117 COVID variant continues spreading. So to slow the spread, we all have to do our part. Saying these treatments can prevent hospitalizations and deaths, Governor Whitmer's faith in monoclonal antibodies is the newest twist in her approach, and she even invoked the person she most heartily fought regarding COVID this past year. Regeneron was administered to President Trump late last year after he had COVID-19 and faced harsh symptoms. Regeneron's treatment very likely helped save the former president's life. It could save yours too. We are using every mitigation strategy, every medication, and every treatment option to help fight the virus here in Michigan. The governor reminds the old rules still apply about masks, social distancing, getting vaccinated, but this new wrinkle is no simple task. Currently, both Regeneron and Eli Lilly treatments are available at a few hospitals in Michigan. We're engaging with our federal partners to expand supply at centers that currently administer these treatments and also working to stand up additional sites where they can be accessed. Now they are fairly hard to come by and it needs to be done early on in the process. And so uh, there's more to be discussed about that. But one of the other things that the governor talked about along with Dr. K is the notion that restaurants, at least indoor dining, are not safe. We'll take a look at that coming up on Local 4 News at 6. Uh, Rod, any reaction so far from Republicans on what we heard today? Well, you know, the uh, the Senate Majority Leader had this uh, fascinating uh, tweet just a few minutes ago, Devin. He said, quote, I applaud Governor Whitmer for resisting the tremendous pressure to lock our state down and trusting Michiganders to do the right thing. To see the governor and the Senate Majority Leader on the same side is to say the least Boy, unique. So right. I haven't seen much of that. All right, Rod, let's turn now to Dr. Frank McGeorge to get some insight on these uh, therapeutic treatments. And these aren't really new. They've actually been in use for a while now. Yeah, absolutely, Kim and Devin. The monoclonal antibody treatments are not new at all. In fact, here's the thing. As coronavirus cases have increased in this wave, we really want to optimize treatment. And we believe there are many people who are eligible for monoclonal antibody treatments who either aren't being offered it or don't know to ask about it. Now, the most ideal candidates to receive these treatments are people testing positive for COVID-19 who are early in their course and have certain risk factors like obesity, diabetes, age over 65, or a combination of risk factors if they are younger than 65. Now, I should also point out, this is only indicated for people who do not need admission to the hospital. And unfortunately, that's honestly why it's not being used as often. Someone who might qualify but had a COVID test at, say, a freestanding facility and didn't choose to see their doctor, they just wouldn't know that this treatment is available or to ask for it. Uh, Doc, we've also been following these uh, latest developments involving the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which has been put on a kind of pause. So let's talk about what's happening there. Yeah, well, the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices has been meeting for several hours to go over the details of the six known cases of these rare blood clots. Now, all of the cases were in women between the age of 18 and 48. And because clotting disorders can be more common in women on birth control or who might have recently been pregnant, they did say that only one of them was on hormonal treatment and none of the cases were related to pregnancy. In fact, 
based on the data calculation by the CDC, the number of these cases was higher than the number that might have been expected as simply background, raising the possibility that there could be a relationship to the vaccine. Now, right now, the decision that the committee is currently considering is whether to leave the emergency use authorization as it is, perhaps recommend that its use be limited to adults 50 or older, or perhaps only men, or they might recommend that the vaccine authorization simply continue to be paused while more data is collected. Unfortunately, they just haven't voted yet, and as soon as we, they do vote, we'll give you their decision. Back okay. to you. All right, Frank. Now, let's take a look at today's vaccine numbers. 200,000 new doses have been distributed to Michigan, bringing the total to 6.2 million. 5.4 million shots have gone into arms thus far. Now, Mayor Duggan sounding the alarm today about the low vaccination rates across the city of Detroit. The city's vaccination rate is at 24 percent. That's the lowest in the state. The mayor says 22 Detroiters have died of COVID-19 within the first 10 days of April. Ten of those deaths were people aged 70 and older who have been eligible for the vaccine since January. With Detroit's positive infection rate near 21 percent, the mayor wants more residents to sign up to be vaccinated. It is going to get worse. There is no doubt that that wave is going to continue to spread down into our city, and we have got to protect ourselves. The Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are available at vaccine sites across the city. We've put information on how to make an appointment on clickondetroit.com. And Detroit Health Director Denise Fair will be live tomorrow morning on Local 4 News Today. She'll be answering questions about the vaccines and the city's plan to reach out further into the community to get shots into arms. She'll join Rhonda and Everard beginning at 6.30 a.m. All right, well, the clouds have been moving in pretty much for the most part of the day. Uh, let's get to Ben, who is tracking a chilly night ahead. And uh, don't think you snuck any of that snow talk past us, Ben. <laughs> you know, uh, we've been talking about this sort of off and on for the last couple of days. And uh, here it is. You can see in the northern sections of the state, there is snow up there around Gaylord. Uh, part 75 getting down towards the uh, Tri-Cities. And we'll see that gradually start to spread towards us as we head towards tomorrow morning. So when we wake up heading to work and school tomorrow, there will be snowflakes around. It's not going to be a ton. We're really not expecting much of any accumulation. In fact, may sit on some deck rails if it comes down fast enough. But whatever is out there isn't going to last very long. The stuff should be wrapped up by the time we get into the noon hour, at least the snow part, not necessarily the rain. So we're dry overnight. We may even get rid of some of these clouds. And then temperatures down to the mid-30s in the metro zone. But parts of the area tomorrow morning will be down even below freezing. We'll check that in your four zone forecast coming up, guys. Okay, Ben, thank you. The police veteran who shot and killed 20 year old Dante Wright during a traffic stop over the weekend has been charged in his death. Kim Potter facing a charge of second degree manslaughter after what her former chief called an accidental shooting. It happened in the Minneapolis suburb of Brooklyn Center and for three nights protesters have gathered there demanding justice. Let's get to Jay Gray outside police headquarters and that's been a rallying point for hundreds since Wright's death. Jay. Three days after Dante Wright was shot and killed during this traffic stop captured by a police body camera, the officer who pulled the trigger, Kim Potter, has been charged with second degree manslaughter. <laughs> the town's police chief, who's resigned since the incident, says it appears Potter thought she had drawn her taser instead of her pistol, calling the shooting an accident. The family of Dante Wright will get to have their day in court. So we say justice for Dante Wright me. Anger over Wright's death has spilled into the streets for three straight nights here. Hundreds ignoring a curfew at times, challenging police, sheriff's deputies, and National Guard troops stationed around police headquarters. There were those that decided to come out and throw bricks, a light here, um, alcohol bottles, cans, and other items at law enforcement officers. Officers responding with tear gas. My nephew's blood is on your head! Though the tears from Wright's family aren't caused by a chemical or confrontation. Instead, they're from the overwhelming pain of their loss. He blows us! Tell him, Grandma. <laughs> He's gonna be missed! Missed. But this community making sure. Say his name! Dante Wright! Say his name! Dante Wright! He's not forgotten. 
Now, the law enforcement presence has intensified dramatically over the last couple of nights, including more than 3,000 National Guard troops now on the ground here in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. I'm Jay Gray, Local 4. All right, Jay. Twin brothers charged in the alleged plot to kidnap Governor Whitmer are going to remain on GPS tethers. Michael and William Null are out on bond after being charged by the state with providing material support for terrorism and also guns charges. They were not seen during today's motion hearing, but their attorney argued for the removal of the tethers and the judge denied that request. He did, however, rescind the house arrest and curfew restrictions that are parts of their bond agreements. All right, much more ahead here at 5. Here's Hank. It's a chance to get health care to more of you, and it's free. We have all the information for you coming up in my Help Me Hank report. All right, Hank, also they're stepping up to help what local pet supply stores did to help an Oakland County canine deputy locked in a battle with cancer. But first, a murder investigation underway after a shooting in an apartment complex in Taylor. That story's next. 